Hi, this is Akasha Ruthie in Chowstiki, and you're listening to MLVC The Madonna Podcast. Hi, everybody. It's Liberty and Hanky Panky. Nothing like a good spanky. Ooh. I've seen, I, see, I thought you were going to do a girly show quote. <laughs> Uh, hi, everybody. It's Stefan. Thanks for joining us for another episode of MLVC, the Madonna podcast, your place for all things Madonna Louise Veronica Ciccone. As you heard today, we are joined by Akasha Ruthie, who danced on Madonna's amazing girly show tour. Akasha, welcome. Welcome. Yay. Hi, you guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, and thank you for bringing the style. Yeah. Look at you! Those. Oh, thank you. We are gonna we're, we're gonna do a little screen grab and share what you're looking like on on our Instagram a little later. But like she's styling it up with some some fire engine red and uh, some those glasses are beautiful. Where are those glasses from? Oh well, actually, my friend got them for me. Their prescription, so I can read. <laughs> Your reading prescription. <laughs> I like read them. in style mm-hmm. exactly. <laughs> they look cool. So before we get to your bio and some questions, I do want to say, so let's, people from Girly Show will, or who have seen Girly Show or know you from Girly Show will know you as Ruthie, but That's right. you now go by Akasha. Is that That's a, right. is that your yeah. new name? Is that an old name? What's the story with that? Well, I would say it's an old name, but it's uh, finally coming to the surface as I start expanding myself with more energy work. It became my energetic name. So now it's becoming a fusion of all my worlds together. Mm. I see. It means air and completion. Mm. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you. I love that being associated with art because, you know, there should, there should be a lightness, how we view things and also how things affect us. I love that. It's beautiful. Absolutely. And then a name is so important too, because he, it has a vibration. Mm-hmm. And when you say the name into it and why you're vibrating at that time on the evol- evolution of yourself, it carries you more into that frequency. If you're into numerology and energy, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'd love to know more about that. That can be another podcast. (laughs) Episode two. (laughs) The Awakening. (laughs) Yes. Well, it's very much that. It's pretty much what we're going nowadays um, of a new reawakening of energy, Mm -hmm. right? We're not vibrating at the same 3D level that we were before, but more in the 5D dimensional energetic level of um, just new, bring a new vibration, thinking of different how we evolve here into seeing a new future, especially with everything that's going on in our planet and everything that has surfaced within mm-hmm. the last few years, too. Oh, and there's been so much, right? Oh, and it will continue, you know, yeah. so that's part of it, definitely. Well, thank I you for, for bringing light and positivity, and that's great. A we ray of one. light. She yeah. brought a ray of light to the show. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. <laughs> just so you know, we're going to be dropping as many Madonna puns as possible. So oh, just but- get on board now, Akasha. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> get ready to go I mean, deeper and, and, and like deeper. Madonna, she was always ahead of herself. You know, she was always bringing that futuristic um, artistic and performance and lyrics. And if you hear it to her lyrics, now we're living it more of like she was ahead right. always 10 years prior mm-hmm. to things happening. Yeah, right. Everything, I mean, it's uh, perfectly orchestrated divinely. I've always thought that about Madonna, <laughs> that there's there's a sense of foretelling in everything that she does and it's almost like like she's able to access the future in a way and um, and bring us you know okay guys this is what's happening and I'm going to take you with me and you can either come or you can be part of 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 the past you know you stay sleeping or you bring this futuristic view forward yeah and I I think that's what it is so it's bringing the future forward of how can we evolve in a better way and not so consuming 
exactly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's, of course, always important to kind of know who we are, where we've come from, which brings me to brings me to maybe just a little bit of a brief bio so we can know exactly who is Akasha Ruthie in Chowstiggy. Um, yes, I hope I get did it. Oh, yes, good you snaps. Did, girl. <laughs> I have to ask you if you, you nail that one. <laughs> well, if your last name, because uh, is it ba- Is it a Basque name? It is a Basque name. Yes, Ooh. yes, you get in star star girl. <laughs> yes. So my great grandfather um, traveled in the military to Peru, oh. towards the jungle, and stay there. So for my father's side, I have all the indigenous and Basque and Spaniel. Wow. And actually, I just did my DNA, and it was just like, whoa. I bet. <laughs> I have a lot, you know, like definitely a lot of, a uh, big part of it is indigenous mm. and um, African. I have African and Spaniel, Basque, yes. and even Scotland, Scottish and uh, Denmark, too. Yeah, like, that's wow. amazing. I have a little bit, yeah, which is really interesting because I for sure thought I would have some Asia into it. Yeah. I'm so connected to, to that part of the world. But it's more African, which makes sense too. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> Those drums, <laughs> that music. Yeah, <laughs> Motherland. <cool>. Yes. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about this. So you were raised in Peru, moved to NYC as a teenager, and you found a whole new world of inspiration, classical dance, uh, acrobatics, and martial arts. Besides working alongside Madonna in the girly show, your career, you've had work with other stars like Janet Jackson, Prince, Maxwell, Pink, Gloria Stefan, Santana, Mariah Carey, Celia Cruz, um, Britney Spears, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, just, you know, drop in the names here and there. <laughs> and a bevy of TV appearances, such as uh, Dancing with the Stars, Grammys, MTV Awards, SNL, Miss Universe, Soul Train Awards. You've got Broadway on your resume as well, and then as well as Cirque du Soleil, enlisting you to lend your expertise and skills to the Michael Jackson Immortal World Tour. Having choreographed in film, theater, opera, commercials, live performances, and then most recently in opera. I had so much fun. (laughs) I had so much fun. I mean, each each experience and work have led me to brought up my expertise, dive into new um, new skills to draw Mm -hmm. from Mm -hmm. and then just continue evolving and evolving and continue having fun with it. And um, I didn't feel myself that I needed to just be locked up in one thing. And just, I think having the enjoyment of what the art brings just helped me to continue reaching out myself and surprise myself, you know, and continue loving the art for it. And that's how it's just becoming its own evolution. And this is really interesting, but it's almost an awakening of a skill that I wasn't aware of yet, Mm -hmm. if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. You know, you're you're attractive to certain things. And for that, you can even learn them for that moment, or you can learn and expand in an awakening a whole different thing from it. I have a great, um, I mean, just like an experience and um, example of that, (laughs) if you want to (laughs) hear. Yeah, totally. Okay, so I, and I know you're going to talk about this too later on, but let's just bring it forward. So I did, I was uh, Halle Berry's main stunt double for Mm -hmm. Catwoman. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And (laughs) And I had to learn to crack the whip. And uh, our teacher was Alex Green, great stunt master in Vancouver. He did all the stunts for Zorro and wow. I think Batman too. So he was mm-hmm. really good. At right. With Michelle Pfeiffer doing the, yes. doing the whip, of course, which uh-huh. makes sense. And Zorro with yes. um, Antonio Banderas and all those amazing actors. Um, but there's something that when you learn to from a master, that have been doing and does his career. And it's just like here and their passion and all those little simple things is what it stays ingrained because then the rest is constantly first, you know, uh, practice, continue practice, practice, practice. And then you evolve to the next crack and the next crack and the next crack. So I ended up learning two cracks from there and he showed me nine cracks that from there you just continue evolving. (laughs) So Michael Jackson uh, came aboard and uh, I took up my whip and um, that was one of the parts in my audition in the booking 
And uh, from there, I taught myself how to crack with the left hand. So then I started oh, nice. cracking both both hands, two whips at a time. And now a, a skill that has grown, I continue doing, and I'm teaching to people now and choreographing with it and different parts of it. So that's what I said in terms of like how the skill evolve after mm -hmm. you have been awakened to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think you know someone very close who loves to do a lot of practice and I'm talking about Madonna, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's let's go back in time to the the early '90s. Uh, uh, Madonna was going on tour with the Girly Show, and you went on the road with her. How did you get involved in Girly Show? How did that come your way? Well, I have only been dancing for a year. <laughs> wow! At that point. Uh, at this point, yes. Wow. Um, okay. So I was in school going for uh, fashion and textile designing and um, gymnastics. I started first and then I started, well, I've been dancing since I was little. I was following my sister and just going, but I was in like technical uh, mm -hmm. train. I train more in folklore music. I love music. I dance with my dad and all like um I grew up listening to Latin music. You just need to get a little bit of that fur back of how much I'm passionate about music and dance. But it was more on a, a spiritual and a joyful place. And then uh, in my teens, when I moved to New York, I got into gymnastics. And then I just ended up taking a class. And from there, someone saw me for a group that actually lead Jennifer Lopez, which is living that and then I just like threw myself into dance because I was booking jobs. I was leaving for work. So I said, let me just take a break from school for now and take this out of my system that I've been wanting yeah. to do for my yeah. whole life up to then. <laughs> and um, I just went and I auditioned for the Next City Dancers, started dancing with them and other groups. And I was in big in the nightclub scene back in the 90s. So I was like going to... Lamlai, working at Lamlai, some factory. So there is this two levels of training and then being a dancer, just love and dance. And I think back there in the 90s, because I heard about the audition through a friend that I was working at a club. It wasn't coming from agents or anything. Well, those two worlds collided and I went to audition for a friend to audition for the male part. And I saw a couple of girls auditioning. So I was like, you know what? Let me just, I'm here. Let me audition for her. For her. Might as well. And I might as well. So then there's like the first cut. And back in the 90s, you have dancers outside in the streets. There's hundreds and thousands of dancers auditioning, mm -hmm. you know, for this part. And um, I actually ended up booking the callback. Nice. Coming back the same day in the afternoon. And Madonna came and she handpicked us all for the callbacks to come back again in New York City. And then from there was a cut that only two girls made it, which was myself and Jill Nicholas. Right. And now we had to go to Los Angeles and audition again with a whole set of dancers that were elected in Los Angeles. Wow. And so they were just sort of like weeding it down, weeding it down. Like they kept cutting, cutting, cutting. And so now it's like the creme de la creme in Los Angeles. That's right. And then at this point, um, with, you know, all the dancers from Los Angeles that have been doing film and tours and, you know, lots of more of a commercial world, mm -hmm. I was diving into it. And what did you have to do? Do you remember how the auditions were? Was it, were you doing dances that you were unfamiliar with and just sort of like fake it till you make it? <laughs> Absolutely. It was always <laughs> fake until you make it at that point. I've only been dancing for one year. Wow. So my that's what I brought a little bit of the background of it because I would just watch it and do it and continue, you know, evolving as it was. I was learning. I was still going to class while I was still working mm -hmm. and, and just throwing myself there, right? So I had it to contemporary um, and I auditioned with, um, oh my God, the beautiful Desiree, uh, Desmond, Richard, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Desmond and he was my partner on, um, 
for the girly show. And we had to do ballet, we had to do jazz, hip hop, I mean, all different, and freestyle too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she was looking a lot too for like the whole world of Vogue and everything. So that's when the club scene of working in the clubs and belonging to different houses and going to houses and just knowing the underworld of dance and music really helped out to be one of her dancers at that time. Sure. And so, I mean, coming in with only about a year, let's say, experience professionally dancing, how did you feel as a new dancer with choreographers who had this background, considering like Alex Magno, and I know we've had the podcast has spoken to them before, mm -hmm. you know, how did you feel? Like, did you have, at any point feel like, I don't know if I can do this or am I, am I in the right spot? Do I belong here? There was no time to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that you had to do is just continue working and getting all the information because you do have to work fast. Um, by this point, dancing a year into it and just being with different choreographers like Maria Torres and AC Coolio, uh, Mar Cecilia Marta, these are like, big teachers in New York City and and I think the Nick City dances was already training me in a technical and work with choreographers and learn the choreographer quick because we mm -hmm. only had one day to learn the choreography and then we had to perform it in in the middle of you know Madison Square Garden right, right? um and by this point audition and work itself you had to have a confidence I think yeah. that's <laughs> that's the part that um, it kept me just being open, not get in the like, am I not enough? And I don't get this as opposed to like, OK, well, let's work harder. Let's keep right. it going. Let's keep it going until we get it right, until we get it right, until we get it right. But I already have developed a good sense of technique to be working with them. It's just like fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see at times being nerve wracking, but there's something when you start just moving through your body that all those thoughts and theories, they just start disappearing because you start embodying them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the beautiful part about dancing and how you can really liberate a lot of um, limited belief of yourself and really mm -hmm. feel like a super human at times you know yeah. that's what I love <laughs> yeah. well so when when Madonna came in was that yes. obviously that was probably more nerve-wracking than when she was not in the room yeah the, I mean there was there's a sense uh obviously because she's like one of the things especially in that tour because I toured with her twice did the Drown World tour with her as well and so then when she this is when she came back again from that tour mm -hmm. it was like 10 years mm -hmm. apart and through the times we kept stay in touch and did a couple of uh, videos with her when she came out with um my baby got a secret and human nature but uh that first tour my view of her was that of the perfection hard working endurance determination and allowness you know but she's a professionist especially when she comes with her shows and everything it's like just observing her how she worked I learned a lot from her um, I mean we would just do a whole run through and we only have maybe like an hour hour and a half to probably eat relax for a little bit and get ready again and do the whole show this is when we come to production after three months of just like working really hard on each wow. numbers and this is my first tour so mm -hmm. I was just like learning my eyes were really open and um it was such a like fast moving time traveling to different places but observing her like in between the shows she would be like running up and down the stairs she would come and work out in the mornings and then she has her sessions going through her steps and then she meets us back on stage and then we all run in it with her mm -hmm. you know um yeah just like the hard physical stamina that you needed to be for that show it was incredible and and then too how to pace yourself in the way that you, your energy is not just dying out 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I always looked at her tours as like a marathon. You know, she must have (laughs) trained like you would for a marathon. You you don't just sign up for a marathon and go run 25 miles all in one day. You know, like you have to work for that. And I I always looked at her doing that with each tour. And um, it's interesting to sort of see how from tour to tour, her physique changed and how Mm -hmm. her style changed and how she, you could tell she learned how to get better breath control from tour to tour as she got more experienced with it. Um, Did you have any numbers in girly show that you absolutely look forward to every night? Oh, well, I love the whole show from top to bottom because it's just, um, it's a ride as soon as you start from that number to your end, right? So that's one level of it. But my favorite numbers would be Vogue. Mm-hmm. I love just how we started it. We had all these different boxes, and in the back we have these poles that we would just slide down to get back. <laughs> I mean, there was a whole different show behind <laughs> the show in front, you know? Um, but that was one of my favorite numbers just because it was such a classic with Vogue, and it had this whole, like, Thai style to it, very mm. the kin and I, and her her whole show was so theatrical and I loved that very much. I grew up watching all this like black and white, Fred Astaire, Ginger mm-hmm. Rogers, all the shows. So it was just perfect for me. Um, then I love Deeper and Deeper because uh, we just Disco brought the whole baby. hustle. Yes. And I was training in New York. I was, I would go and hustle with my friend, you see, you know, so that was uh, a good thing to do and uh, justify my love. Because of the, all the costumes so and beautiful. you just get to be in so much characters and bye bye baby. Mm-hmm. Yes, that was like such a good fun number to do too. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, and the beast within, of course. Oh, I everybody can. loves the beast within. I, oh. I, think, I think everyone that we've had on the show, I think Luca Tomasini, <laughs> I think uh, Christopher <laughs> Childers, like uh, Carrie Ann Naba, like everyone that we've yeah. had from that show is like beast within. <laughs> yes. Well, because the beast with the beast within had such a freedom for us. It was the only number that we got to do just the dancers. Right. We definitely have choreography and a format, but then there's room for just being in the moment and having a, a free moment to express. And and those are the moments as a performer and artist that you get to let go of everything that you dealing with even within the show mm-hmm. you know because sometimes things happen <laughs> that you're like behind or something or customer malfunction or stage my malfunction anything or anything that might be bothering you through the day the, the traveling whatever it is a personal it was the place where you can just actually just like let go mm-hmm. yeah so I can see why it's the favorite of everybody <laughs> then we get to be wild too <laughs> well because everything was uh, very theatrical and they had a character and and that that number was the only one that we just got to be raw mm-hmm. yes and a lot of the things why you get chosen is because you do have those unique specialties that mm. you get to yeah. here and there you know especially with Madonna she brings those out at different mm-hmm. moments and she can play it off that. Um, and so, well, I mean, given that everyone has all of these different specialties or different backgrounds and how does it, how does a stage director or choreographer bring all of the styles together so that they work and not look disjointed? Well, as a choreographer and a director too, it's, um, it's something that musically mm-hmm. and then what that musically moves, that picture is moving. Right. right. And how that skill can belong in certain parts. Like you get a crumper, it becomes in the music where the energy is, is more like robusted and about to explode because of all the energy taken as you take a, a ballerina and it's more flowy and more enchanting. Mm-hmm. And it's it's the musicality and um, what's happening in the music that you get to use people's expertise to their best. Right, to draw out from each dancer their unique uh, specialty. And and maybe even 
bring it out of, like you mentioned earlier about maybe another dancer has a talent. They don't know they have, but it's been birthed sort yes. of, or, you know, yes. they learn it and, or they, they realize that, wow, I'm actually pretty good at that, um, where they might not have thought that before. I know, I know. And, and no one else can do it like that person, you know, they can be two or three, they can do right. similar things. So from there you choose to like, okay, you two or three are going to go in group for this series because you, the three of you can move, you know, bring that energy and um, so then that's how you start drawing and you get solo. So you get solos with her um, in terms of what they want to express visually mm-hmm. at, that, at that moment. Yeah. And how did your experience differ on Drown World Tour from Girly Show? So obviously, you know, you've already been through Madonna Boot Camp. You've, you've, done, the, you've done the tour. You, you know what she's like on the road. But now... It's a very different Madonna. Years, years later, she's now a mother and yes. she's, she's got a, a wealth of different style of music. She's very spiritual based now. And Drown World Tour was, I felt, so much more theatrical in a different way. It was a bit more Broadway Madonna than it was like Girly Show was a bit more like stadium tour type of feel. But how, how, what was your experience like on Drown World Tour? The, how was oh, it different? That's, that's interesting that you feel that way. I feel like the Girly Show was more like Broadway theatrical and or like movie sets. And um, the Drown World Tour became a little bit more uh, to like uh, futuristic, new agey, bringing the... Uh, that European sound and mm-hmm. electronic bass, you know, um, by this 10 years have passed yeah. <laughs> of, of growing and getting more expertise and becoming now as a choreographer, you know, having more, more refined things and more things that, are, that were more uh, rooted. in me. And by this, I started doing, you know, partnering work, ballroom I started doing the La Guarda which brought a whole different sure. growth as an artist you know here I was performer dancer where you still you know technically you have to like hit your lines and prepare and be strong and when I got to the La Guarda I had to take all that training and pretty much throw it out the window <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and how can I still have that underneath without showing it, but build another sense of me as um, as a performer and, and to become more vulnerable with people, mm-hmm. you know, and really vibe of an energy. And I think it's where it, it, like, it really just like taught me and trained me to what the Drown World 2 was coming ahead um, cause everything was with harness. We have 500 people in the room. There's no sitting It's interactive. So we are around people, water's falling on top of us. We are flying from one place to another. We're like running on the walls and getting splat into the, <laughs> into the campus. And if Taylor you Guarda haven't was seen one it, one of the most insane experiences <laughs> I've ever been to. I was like, how are these people doing this? Like, cause you're just looking up and you're like, dancing on the ceiling practically I just, it was insane <laughs> yes yes I mean it, it was amazing so then when I auditioned to Madonna uh, she was bringing aerial work into it and right. um, martial arts it was something that I was training in uh, capoeira and kung fu and always martial arts have been to growing up to as well um, but then the expertise were coming because I was working with Deborah Brown and Ty Mac and uh, they were both choreographing. But then I was able, because I was in the rig, to just put my expertise into it and just help with the whole flow of the number and just doing ballroom and partnering. I got to partner her. And then there's something to that stepping on the stage of Drown World Tour compared to the girly show. Um, there was a, a little more refined and seasoned 
performer mm -hmm. than what I was in the girly show. Mm -hmm. You know, girly show, my eyes were open and just like ready, excited. The kid in the <laughs> candy store. Um, and Dram World Tour, you know, just felt more of like, okay, I'm here, I'm set. I, I know my surroundings and I know how to support Madonna and I know what she takes and how much demand it is for her show and how much is given. And it's like you become part of her performance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that's what she's so particular in picking up her people because it's the energy that she's going to be surrounding herself in the show and it's how you vibe that yeah. energy because if it's true, then that shows up and people can feel that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, would you say that she's given that over the course of the time that you worked for her on both of those tours that she evolved your dancing? I mean, in any kind of way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, there is always evolving. Yeah, definitely. You know, because you, you're bringing all those expertise too, and they're being shown because of her. Right. She helps you to bring that platform of, you know, how can we push the envelopes and, and how can we be part of that and how can we make it better and, and put up a kick-ass show mm -hmm. at the end of the day. <laughs> That's what it and is. It was, you know? And it was a kick-ass show, <laughs> I got to say. Oh, yeah, kick my ass too. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them, the Drawn World and, and Girly Show, because I would say for me, probably, uh, I would say, I mean, Drowned World was my very first tour experience of Madonna's, like, seeing her live. Uh, and, uh -huh. and, I mean, I already had, of course, ideas what to expect because I was such a huge fan of, already. But um, just thinking about, like, the feeling of, of what you see in person for the first time when you see a Madonna show that even though you may have an idea, like you do not know until you actually see the people swinging or doing some something like where it looks like they're flying or there's more, there's just so much more. Um, and from an audience perspective, obviously we like to like, you know, we think, wow, like I just can't believe how that they can do that night after night. Um, and, and then of course, what talents you guys have brought to the table and what talents Madonna has tried to get a little bit more out of you. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, uh, rehearsals, we usually do six days out of the week and, you know, it's like from 10 to six or sometimes a little bit longer. But after that, you know, it depends on you too. Like if you feel like you need to work on something that maybe you're doing a solo on it and then you have to continue training, that's something that you put on yourself as a professional. Mm -hmm. That's other stuff that you still, you know, train for it mm -hmm. and prepare for it. I mean, it, I always tell people, it's like, you really have to love it. It's, there's a beautiful process that comes with it. And there's a lot of cons to that, yeah. you know, it's a lot of hours physically sure. exhausted. Sometimes you have needles between shows and your knees because wow. you need to get better for the next next one ice pack or whatever you need to have you know but it's like there is a moment where you're performing that you just feel so alive mm -hmm. and yeah. sometimes that's the part that carries you through and then when you finish you're like oh god I need a massage <laughs> or a, a hot bath but you know as as you that and that would be too the difference of taking care of myself when I did the Drown World tour. That when I did the girly show, I was going and partying after the show and I right. couldn't have enough and you know, just having the time to to enjoy the places that we were going. And have you been able to see Madonna on tour since the since you toured with her uh, in the um, Drown World? Um, no, I've just I've seen videos. I haven't oh, okay. had the chance to have I seen her live in one of the, um, no, I think just videos, which I love. And I know the, the dancers too. Yeah. And I know the, the work that it takes to put on in there, you know, so it's always fascinating and how it continue growing mm -hmm. and how to, with Jamie Kim, when we did Dream World Tour, we already have worked together in the human nature, the video human nature. Mm -hmm. So I got, to know him from other projects. And then we met up 
in the Dry World Tour. And from there, we've, you know, done other projects together. And then to see as a director how, and visual artist, how he continued taking the evolution of what live show has become, mm -hmm. you know. Now we're more into a digital technology era where now the stage is moving and it's making you feel like moving. But imagine 60,000 people in an arena in Brazil and the whole stadium is just jumping up and down. And this is girly tour because that era with Madonna was so huge. It's and huge. to experience that, I've never experienced anything like that in that time even with her later on in 10 years and other artists that I have performed with. Mm. There was nothing like 1993 and going through all these different countries and the amount of people that would gather outside. It was so overwhelmed, people on top of cars and just chanting, Madonna, Madonna. Toast. You can hear from the hotels and everything, but... Going back to the arena of people jumping, it felt like the stage was on water. It felt wow. like the stage was moving. So wow. it like throws you, your whole balance is off. You know, it was very overwhelmed and, and in a beautiful and just being an observant way. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure as someone who's very in touch with personal energy, I'm sure that like the energy that you were receiving from those fans every night was probably just the most amazing thing. Oh my God. It was just oceans of oceans of energy, you know? And it was like, I know just seeing their faces just like, whoa, I get even overwhelmed because we're visiting that time right now. And I just remember myself being on stage and just looking down and seeing people's faces and smiles and just energy and just reaching out. You know, it's like I get good spoons from it. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, it, it was very powerful. And just that feeling of being on stage, because sometimes um, with the girly show, yes, we were already in stage in our little boxes. So you can hear the raw even before the show starts. And then from there, it's like, <laughs> and then trying to hear the music. And for Dry World Tour, when we did Frozen, and we were, I was at the end of the station, like right in front where the people are. Mm -hmm. And just getting all that energy as you're rising up from the elevator. Right. You're getting all that energy just like, bouncing off of you and it's like it's it's, it's intoxicated too sure. <laughs> you yeah. know it's overwhelming intoxicating it's healing because it's all that work all the hard work that you put in rehearsal on production and every night and traveling and just taking care of yourself to be your best to be there for every show for the people that are coming for to be there for Madonna to be there as a professional you know it's 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 a lot. It's a lot that goes with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so before, because you've worked with a, a slew of other people, before I ask you about them, I just want to say, so you said secret and human nature. Tell us about your experiences real quick about working on a Madonna music video. How, how, <laughs> how is it different than a stage Madonna? Oh, uh, well, let's say for human nature, I mean, human nature, we actually rehearsed a week in the studio mm. and it was just getting used to how can we make these boxes interesting and getting used to it on heels, <laughs> like <laughs> platform, <laughs> 10 stilettos heels, you know, um, in tight cat suits. But it was mainly just getting used to the heels being in the box and then creating the look and the feeling that we have her on ropes mm -hmm. and and then just timing, you know, that can take, that takes a little time to like build up, build up. And then when you have a choreography that you're putting in the box, then it's just like learning and see how you can move yourself. So that takes about a week. Uh, that took us a week of work and then we shot it within two days. Well, it's it's fun because in videos, 
you get to stop. <laughs> you get to bring all that energy and, and work and make sure that is, you know, you take it for session. Since we did it in two days, those things were taken in sessions of it. So you can sit back, watch it, see how you're doing. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just a shorter amount of time. Was it fun to reunite with a couple guys from Girly Show? Oh, yes. Lucas and Michael. (laughs) That was really good. It's always good. And I do still keep in touch with a lot of, you know, a lot of becomes your family. You become family, you know, through working like that in that intensive. I was going to say. And that Mm -hmm. a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um, We definitely become a family, which, you know, at times, too, you can be like uh, that family (laughs) energy. Mm-hmm. But um, through times and evolvement, <laughs> things, you know, just keep evolving. We keep having fun and we keep creating with each other. How can we make this better? And that's the fun part about working with one another and people that you have worked with. Right. You already know each other. Yeah. And I mean, you always, I mean, everybody who comes into an experience like that kind of brings with them their their growing up or their experiences that they've that they've lived through up to that point and so what did you I mean having grown up in Peru you mentioned earlier right yes so Mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your your growing up or your formative years in Peru and um, you mentioned dancing I'm a little bit curious about um, you know was your dad also a dancer or did you just uh, you were just oh well, he always loved to dance, and I think a lot of like my freestyle, I can see my dad's uh, groove in there. Yeah, <laughs> whether I went, I saw it when I was a child or not. Um, but he was always making me do like dance contests with my brother, and I would oh. just get into <laughs> character. But my middle sister was, you know, the dancer, so she was always like helping me stretch, and she was the martial artist and the gymnast. So I would be behind her doing splits, car wheels, and you know, just making my wonder land yeah. <laughs> just growing, <laughs> being in my own world. Um, but yeah, uh, my dad had a cabana at the beach. So I grew Ooh. up at the beach in, in the ocean and surfing, fishing and swimming the whole time. And, and that was our playground. So there was music all the time because there was a restaurant at the beach and music was always around. And that was the time too when Thriller was coming out, Madonna was coming out with, um, who's that girl? Um, I think time and my sister was very, you know, into all of that. So I will always be dancing and creating my own world, seeing videos and and just imitating like every other kid, having this dream of, you know, becoming what I became. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And more. And more. I mean Yeah, I'm sure more. as a, I'm sure as a little child you had no idea what was coming your I way. I have no idea, but I I was always drawn to it, you know? I was always drawn to it and I just and like, I mean, had no expectations. That must have really been something to be growing up in Peru and hearing all of these hearing all of these, you know, artists and everything. And then all of a sudden you're on the stage with them somehow. And I mean, that is like, I don't want to use the expression like, you know, kind of like um, whirlwind, but, you know, because it does take a lot of work to get there. Right. So, I mean, what, what kind of other experiences with these other artists? I mean, in addition to Madonna, obviously there's no, a lot I, of hard work. I think but. you, you point, a, you actually just said a really good point because at times, because I love this so much and it became a dream come true, but I don't see, I don't too speak about the hard work that goes into it. You know, the every day just going to yoga or being in the dance school or, you know, practicing your tondus even till now, even when I teach, I'm still doing the tondu, you know, Ronda Shans, like your ballet, your basic, <laughs> it's your foundation, yeah. right? And you always like here and there, you continue doing that. But through the years, you know, all the hard work that we were going and doing from one thing to another, even just to go and get the job. 
you know, sure. just being able to go and audition and work hard at that and keeping yourself always fresh too right. and secure because mm -hmm. that's where you bring two into the room. It's like your confidence to what all the hard work that you have done, how sure. you bring in to the room and how you can be part of that. Oh, yeah. Well, and <clears throat> like Liberty said, you've worked with so many other people that, I mean, are just as iconic as Madonna. Did you have any like amazing experiences with other artists? I mean, like I love Jenna Jackson. I mean, Prince is amazing, obviously. I mean, there's like, I've seen Gloria Estefan in concert. I mean, Britney Spears, Katy Perry, like all of these people are just like, either they were along the same timeline as Madonna or they are as a result of Madonna. Um, True that. What was it then like to sort of work with the the princesses of pop, you know, like Britney Spears and Katy Perry? Were you seeing some of the same like, oh, yeah, Madonna, this is a Madonna influencer? Oh, yes, definitely. And you they will always tell me to <laughs> say, no, you know, like, okay, she's a Madonna dancer. And um, I think too, there was a big trust because of it. You know, Madonna opened a lot of doors for me. And, um, and I was known too, because of like working with her and then having my skills. And uh, within there were always influence into Madonna. Mm -hmm. I even work with um, Anna Visi. She's kind of like the Madonna in, in Greece. Mm -hmm. And um, they always, you know, have a big respect for her, have a big influence because of her. And um, you, you can see, like, sometimes either using steps like Madonna or just the energy of mm -hmm. Madonna, like, Madonna is an icon for a lot of, especially, you know, pop artists and that they were coming like after her or like you said, like that influence gave them that liberation to just find their own too as well. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your, about your current work, what you're doing right now. What can we expect to see you or, or your, what are you working on right now? So right now I, I just moved back into Los Angeles. <laughs> so I'm kind of like reestablishing myself there, but I'm working and developing with different artists. Right now working with Kim Petra. I, I don't nice. know. Nice. I love Kim Petra. Well, she's, so yeah. <laughs> she's so wonderful. She's so wonderful. It's really interesting how, and again, you know, I, I think too, that was a lot of influence to like, working with Madonna and having a little bit push of envelopes. Mm -hmm. And it's still what is cool, though, working with new artists is seeing the evolution and to what they're bringing and how they're finding themselves, especially nowadays with social media mm -hmm. and uh, this new technology that we have, right? Um, then I'm just, like, working on writing the uh, shows, just have um, two shows that I'm writing on that my whole thing is about uh, visual meditation and movement through meditation and just uh, bring something uh, that is both of my world with like energy and spirituality and the art mm -hmm. and how can we bring that into, you know, the theater and um, I'm still working in the opera. <laughs> Hopefully, we are aiming for 2023 on the fall in Queensland, Australia. Wow. Um, hopefully that we don't get shut down by COVID right. again. Because they've it's, been tough. This will it's be been our tough third. with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> this will be our third attempt. But I, I feel like we're going to be able to get through. So I'm working on the RIN. Uh, but... Wagner opera oh. and there's four operas into one so we're doing the four of them that's going to be shown through the whole week wow. it's the first wow. time that usually they do it by sessions by opera but now this time is the first time that they will be able to use show the four operas in one within one week because they're so long um but it's really interesting to just even learn that world and just be with 
amazing singers that have so much power within their voice. Oh, yeah. It's, Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm looking into start teaching like my own styles and skills and um, I do aerial yoga too. So there's a lot of uh, <laughs> new little things that are starting and, you know, you're always working yeah. with it. There's a lot of things too that just happening from, you know, a day before they'll call you. I just work with American Song Contest. Oh for yeah, the artist Alexa. Yeah, and she did great too. So it's, you know, that's good. I mean, that sounds you've like you've got a lot of stuff going on. There's always projects. <laughs> well, yes, there's oh, there's always uh, fun projects that comes out of the blue. But then um, I, I taking my whip cracking to its own world <laughs> and you know I'm teaching different artists to and different people to work and bring that to to the artistry mm -hmm. but I'm really and in, um, in the plan of just creating its own flow and hopefully you'll get to see more of that in an artistic way too mm -hmm. using nice. and dancing Yes. yes. Well, you never know when you need a good whip cracking. I mean, you if there's no. If there's <laughs> anyone who's taught us that, it's definitely Madonna's whip cracking, <laughs> timed well, really gets the job done. I know. Don't be surprised that <laughs> in one of those she'll be coming cracking the whip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think it might be the time for Tony's favorite part of the show. I think you might be right, Liberty. Akasha, we do a little thing on the show called the lightning round. It's just meant to be quick off the top of your head, wherever you're at in your Madonna journey. Um, favorite Madonna song? Uh, Human Nature. Okay. Yes. Favorite Madonna video? And yes, it can be one that you were oh, in. Oh God, Human Nature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite Madonna tour? Uh, girly show. Yes. Favorite Madonna look, and this can be from a tour, a video, in person. I would say um, La Isla Bonita from the Drown World Tour. Mm. Oh my gosh! So yes, good. it was yes. so. There's something classic and beautiful, and and just her at that time yes. that I appreciate it. And I mean, she has so many looks. It's so hard to like think, but. Just when I saw her life and of mm -hmm. what I can remember, I would say definitely that one. Oh, yeah. What it feels like for a girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Loca Siente La Mujer is probably one of my absolute favorite performances ever, ever, yeah. ever, ever, ever. Whole I know. It, it was so beautiful. It was such a like a yin and yang. It was masculine because of the trousers and yeah. feminine because of the front dress and mm -hmm. just her hair pulled back and her red lipstick. Yep. It's just, you know, simple, but just beautiful yeah, for her at that time. It's yeah. Beautiful. Well, Akasha, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. This was a real treat. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm so glad we were able to make this happen and tell everyone where they can find you on social. How can they, how can they follow along with your whip cracking? <laughs> oh, perfect. Well, if uh, you can follow me on Instagram at akasha.ruthie. And that's with a Y. And remember, everybody, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at MLVC Podcast. Uh, you can also donate to the podcast on Venmo at MLVC Podcast. Or think about becoming a subscriber on Patreon, patreon.podbean.com forward slash MLVC Podcast. Liberty, thanks for coming on the show today. And uh, Akasha, thanks for coming on the show. This is an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And it was talking great talking to you, to you both. Good to talk to you too. To go into a little bit of Madonna history, my history. <laughs> Thank you.